a third evolution. I, I mean, I think you talked about it uh, going to uh, serverless, F -A -F, from fast to fast. Doesn't sound good, doesn't it? I'm now using a fast. They've actually got <laughs> a term for that, uh, the spectrum of compute. Yeah, yeah. Oh, someone told me something the other day which I thought was a bit strange, but maybe quite apt, born in the cloud. Because the, the, I guess the, the trouble with serverless and, um, and Lambda is that you kind of have to architect your, um, your application this way from the beginning, right? You can't uh, migrate your Windows 95 to Lambda. No, no. Please don't. OK, I think, um, OK, we're still filtering in. Hey, so you, someone can sit in my chair. It's warm. Um, so you don't have to stand. Shall we uh, just close the door, get started? Can someone just shout around the corner saying, it's starting, it's starting, oh my god, and then close the door? <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, there's a there's a free seat right here. Just don't don't be shy. So this does this work? Yeah, kind of. <coughs> So um, I work with Daniel over there, who who also helps uh, organize stuff, and um, yeah, I think I feel like an astronaut because uh, I think we're using uh, Lambda technologies at work in a pretty hardcore manner, and um, I guess I'm just going to share what I've uh, I'm learning. Right, I've I've learned over well, how long have we been doing this, Daniel? Like three months, a couple of months. Um, where I work is, Spool, uh, is, is a company called Spool. It's, it's like the, the Netflix for, for Indian content and the <laughs> is, is a w way of describing it. And what we've engineered using Lambda functions is a content provider uploads the, the film to S3. That triggers off um, an enco uh, encoding job to like take a clip of that of video and then furthermore crop it. And we're right now we're like at about 10, um, 10 lambda functions for the for the whole video ingestion process. And even though it's not quite production yet, I mean, well, it is production. I think it's a, a moderate success, somewhat. I mean, we've made some mistakes, and this is what I'm going to share with you. Oh my gosh, I didn't start the timer. Fifteen minutes. So yeah, this is why I titled it from the trenches. It's just like war stories, but. I guess your grandfather one was a lot better than this one. A lot better, hopefully. <laughs> so I can't actually see the screen. OK, so uh, Yoss sort of introduced us to, to Lambda functions. Um, one thing I think Huren, the hater over there, he was saying that it's proprietary. No, no, no. This idea of function uh, running in the cloud is pioneered by Amazon, but there are um, the Microsoft version, which is just damn similar, I mean, they're all the very, very much the same, in my opinion. I IBM OpenWhisk, I don't know, Google, whatever. That. And the way that I think of uh, Lambda is basically just manage code environment in the cloud. And hopefully you guys got that, at least tonight. Um, another thing that, I, this is a stupid analogy, so you can just shoot me down. I'm, I'm a bit of a Unix old school sort of guy. Uh, whoever, who's used Plan 9? Just me, just me. Um, but I'm a big fan of the Unix philosophy, philosophy, doing one thing and one thing well. And I think that buys into the whole uh, idea of Lambda functions. Um, and, but furthermore, with, with um, I mean, everyone's familiar with the sort of fine grep. Do you guys use Unix? Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> but it's, it's pretty much like Unix, but on steroids, I would say. Um, and also, it's... It's, um, you know, unlike pipes, like for example, when, you, when you're doing it with Unix pipes, handling error cases is quite tricky. And the cool thing about uh, um, Amazon Lambda, I think, it, or, is that you can actually save the event so you can replay them. 
which is pretty interesting. And then everything, uh, everything is event-driven, which is actually pretty crap on a Unix system. Events is in a bit of a nightmare. So, um, uh, yeah, I just, this is the, uh, what I told you guys already. Up on, oh, sorry. Oh, God. So, so somewhere out there, hopefully I won't defocus. So, yeah, we're using Lambda at work. And furthermore, we're also using DynamoDB. This is, this is important because, because when you're using DynamoDB to, to use things, you're probably going to end up having to use JavaScript. I'll probably get onto that. And we probably made a one mistake because we split up um, all our Lambda functions. With serverless framework, which uh, Jos was speaking about briefly, you can combine things, which is probably a better idea. But now we've sort of invested in doing separate things. We've probably made a mistake there. <clears throat> There's several ways to deploy your Lambda functions. You could just use the AWS CLI, but it's quite naive. It's just like you just you have to do everything manually, zip it up, and then you do like deploy somehow. But serverless is not just um, a way of describing this way of computing. Serverless is actually like a company that provides tooling, and that's what we use. There's other one uh, called Apex Run, and this is the main tools that you use to to deploy your Lambda functions. The other one we're using serverless. It's a NPM project called Lambda Local. Oh. Uh, which, for if, if you're running a single Lambda function. Serverless seems a bit overkill for one function. Right? Lambda local just allows you to run lo uh, Lambda locally. With, uh, you utilize basically the index.js or the handler and uh, one event, and that's it. And you don't have the whole overhead of your serverless with YAML file. Yeah. The cloud formation can be. The, the important thing to realize is that, you, that when you're developing, serverless especially gives you tooling to develop locally which is really important because you might be on a crappy internet connection somewhere in Asia. <laughs> Another important tool which I like about the whole Lambda thing is you can, um, which I do pretty much on, on all our uh, Lambda stuff, you can SNS subscribe. So basically when a movie flows through this sort of 10 Lambda functions, I can see, I have good visibility of all the events that are, going, that are happening just with a, with a subscribe, uh, like an email subscribe. Um, which I find quite quite useful. Um, so yeah, the the cool thing about uh, Lambda on AWS at least is that you get free logging. So every time that Lambda function runs, you have like a great log. Every time you console log, you have a great log of what actually happened. There is a bit of a downside to it. There's a little bit of delay. You're probably familiar with it, but uh, I find the log very very useful because you don't have to like worry about instrumenting your program so much. It's just there. And it's very robust. Another good thing is that it, it th makes you think in these sort of events, which you can basically store as files .json, and then you can use that as your as like test cases. You can you can use it to like make sure that your functions are idempotent. I never know how to pronounce that word. Did I say it correctly? Idempotency. So um, and another thing is that. Uh, you, you might be worried about the long iteration cycles, but when you do it locally, it's quite fast. And it's got like added benefits with serverless that you can set up uh, web endpoints really, really easily with it, which is damn useful. So the not so good things is that, uh, I guess this is applies to the whole cloud thing. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm really lazy when it comes to defining policies. So. So, for example, I start writing a program and then and then I deploy it and it doesn't work for whatever permission error, and then I have to add it back, uh, add the permission in there, and then run it again, add the permission. I wish there was a way of sort of running the function, and then depending on what resources it used, it would just you know come out with a policy that I should be that it recommends I use with my function. Does anyone else find policies just painful? <laughs> okay, there's one other person. So um, the next kind of painful thing is that you do have options, as Yoss pointed out, of using Python or, or Java or uh, what is the other one? There's probably another one. But you, you really need to use JavaScript because it's like the most native one. Um, you know, you're dealing with um, like SNS event JSON. 
you, you, you're dealing with um, like using doc client on DynamoDB. Uh, you, you really do want to use JavaScript. And when you use JavaScript, um, you painfully realize that you have to like, learn promises as, as what we had to do to make everything synchronous and kind of manageable. Who's familiar with JavaScript promises? Well, I, f I find it quite a steep learning curve. Um, but, and it's kind of like a, I didn't want to use too many libraries. But I guess the good news is that a new node versions will have better like async await um, things to, to help you code in JavaScript. Um, th there's things like, uh, yeah, you're kind of limited by cloud formation, which can be quite slow. Like not everything you can define in cloud formation. So that kind of limits you. You just need to be aware of it, really. And one thing that we found with uh, serverless, I mean, is a, is a, does anyone know how to solve this problem? Is that it's polluted our, our S3 sort of namespace with all these serverless things because it, it uses S3 to stage the deployment. And also YAML. I hate that format. Is it just me that hates that format? <laughs> the minute you just get like one like wrong indent and you're screwed. I hate it. But that's why you didn't use Python. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I hate Python for other reasons. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, like Apex Run uses JSON, which is nice. I mean, any, any JSON file is also okay. available. Oh, yeah, well, I know what you're saying, but... <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, um, yeah, Amazon JS SDK. It's a bit of a nightmare. I, I, I want you to mention that also a big benefit of obviously using JavaScript is that you can start doing your front end, which is naturally probably going to be a web application and, again, in JavaScript. So other things that really, really uh, annoy me is that like, you, you can't like, put too much stuff in your handler. It's a bad idea. Don't do it. You kind of need to keep your handler quite slim, in my opinion, um, and, and keep the, maybe the functionalities in a separate uh, JS file, which you can test and do separately. Um, the really, really bad thing is that there's no debugger as far as uh, Yes, is there a debugger? Fuck. My boss, my, I had an ex-boss, a really good guy. He always used to say to me, if you're on a project and there's no debugger, think about leaving that project. <laughs> it sucks not having a debugger, especially when JavaScript probably does have the best debugger in this industry, arguably. I, I'm sure just Amazon just need to, to basically get it out of... Be I'm hoping Amazon have the solution. I hope they have the solution, but it is really quite painful right, right now with no debugger. So this is why I say keep your code separate so you can test it uh, out, of, out of the context of your handler. Um, it's slow logging, I mentioned that. Um, yeah, when there is an error with your handler, it can be quite tricky to just go to the exact log. I mean, I don't know if you have a nice workflow, but you know, when you're running lots of landers, you know, hundreds of them, and there's one error, it's really difficult to track it down in CloudWatch. Do you, do you know, does someone know a way of doing this? Because it really irritates me. Um, another thing I don't really like is that w you typically use JavaScript. I'm quite new to JavaScript. Like, for example, Sebastian is a pro. He's a ninja. And then when you upload the node modules, you know how it is. It's like, I'm, I get nervous. I get into sweats. It's like, what, what's there? You don't have good visibility. Is it out of date? Because with the cool thing, well, what you want to do with Lambda Functions is just deploy and forget. But with, with like 400 megabytes of node modules, scary stuff. Um, I'm hoping Amazon will solve a lot of my complaints with, st uh, yeah, step functions is a way of sort of like saying if this Lambda function fails, do this. It's a way of like sort of uh, orchestrating your Lambda functions, which is sorely needed because if you're doing it with your head all your time, your head will go sore. Um, X-ray is supposed to be like a debugger thing, but when I looked at it, it didn't actually help me. Um, but there are like, um, like, what do you call it, startups that are kind of solving this problem, I think. But I'm just reluctant to use a startup solution sometimes. You know how it is. So, yeah, to conclude, um, you've got to use I'm sorry, guys. It's 2017. You all have to, to learn JavaScript. You've got no choice. Who's, who's one of these Java stalwarts here? I feel sorry for you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I do recommend serverless, even though it's a little bit annoying. I don't think there's anything better than it. If it is, just let me know. Um, I did link, oh, quirky. There, 
I will put the presentation below on the video or something like this. But there's um, there's a, a there's a link to like serverless examples, which are a really good way to start. And despite my complaints, I think Lambda is definitely like a step up from ECS. ECS is a nightmare in my experience. Um, and I personally have have uh, given um, written a couple of stupid um, uh, what do you call it websites that use Lambda functions in the back end. For example, this one. This one is a Lambda function that has phantom JS um, in, as a binary that, and, and basically, if I put a URL there, I can't see, it's hopefully nothing too embarrassing. It, it basically uses phantom JS, retrieves that, outputs that to a PDF, and puts it in, and embeds it in there. So now you can um, tell your boss, I can print the internet now. Just give me a URL, boss. I can do it. So um, that's using a Lambda function. And it's pretty quick. Um, I even did a stupid video about it. So you can do these little things. And I, I love it because you can just sort of like fire and forget. Uh, another, another one. Um, oh, this is a little known feature about um, uh, the th sort of integrations you can do with Lambda. This one is an integration with uh, SES. So if you email that, um, I'm probably the only one who has this complaint. Hey, do you ever get like emails and then only look at the text part? I don't read HTML email. I just... <laughs> Does anyone read text email? Anyway, this bit, this project which no one seems to care about, uh, I don't know why, because it's awesome, it rips out the HTML part, so it's just text, so it just shows you the text part of the email. No, it's an iPhone, dog. What the hell are you on? It, it does have an ancient browser, though, called Safari. Heard of it? Okay, I got one minute left. Um, yeah, so I think it's... I, I like it because, yeah, you can write something, you can deploy it. And I don't know about you guys and your, if you've had little side projects, but, like, this feels so much more relaxing. You do a side project, you deploy it into a Lambda function, and you just know it's going to work. It's going to work into the future. And that's just like, well, that's, that's how I feel about it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. That's all I had to say about serverless. Um, I really want you guys to get onto it. So I'm very happy to hear from you if you have some, any question about it. Um, because, you know, the sooner I, I, I genuinely feel that it is uh, like some sort of, advancement in computing technology so you know the more Singaporean businesses and more Singaporean peeps start using it I think it will make us smarter than the next silly country okay any questions oh yeah Probably show you even now, shall I? <laughs> no, it's it, it, uh, no. The what would you say are the most complicated one? The video encoding DRM one. That's quite complicated. Actually, if you look at all the functions, that's the function itself. None of them are complicated because what was said in the beginning, you split everything into like tiny yeah, that's the that's the good point. I think the, the, the first one that we did was the, the most complex because was the first one, and that answers one of the question of the binaries. So our first question is to actually extract video metadata out of an approved file. FF probe. So we use we use a mix between FFmpeg and FFprobe to, to get like the dimension of the of the source file to kind of properly guess how much black hole the top left, not and right so an SVO code to launch a data function that triggers a uh, system code to run it to get out this information and store back to dynamic information. I think that's the most complex in CPU terms. Oh, you, you're worried about the costs, right? Or? Yeah, yeah, hypothetically, if you had like an FFM TikTok that was running 100% CPU, <coughs> you've got a VM instance versus running a Lambda function. The Lambda function ends up cheaper. 
I don't know. But, but you can't run long run. You can't do long running. Uh, I don't sorry, sorry. Yeah. The, the, you've got to remember that lambda functions are limited, um, not just the environment, uh, which is like 500 megabytes, so you can't really do a big video. Uh, you're limit I think the max is like five minutes. You can run it, keep it yeah. going. Yeah. Um, and memory wise, and storage wise, then. Yeah, so you don't do long running things. If you, if you have a complicated lambda function, you're probably doing it wrong, is what I would say. Keep it simple. Uh, oh, I yep. Uh, so, sorry. Like in my project, any uh, publicly exposed APIs that do some sort of significant computational stuff that. Oh, like your like the fact that you had to protect your. Uh, yeah, I, I just uh, we do, and we we use just a basic uh, authorizer. Yeah, right. It's actually anything complex. It's just a callback from the video encoder. It's uh, basically taking some stuff, storing dynamically. It takes a few minutes. Yeah. yeah, that is not and we use just basic code. So username, column, password. And yeah, so that's not public facing in that sense. Like, would you ever? No, but if someone is sitting on the line and listening, mm. well, I, my 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 print the internet thing is is open to the world and. Yeah. 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 So are you, <laughs> did you ever run in your head like this? It's kind of expanding on on the other question from before. Did you ever run it through? No, I I haven't seen any like remotely significant cost for lambda i mean uh, maybe uh, what did, what was that say maybe later sure but like i mean it, i mean anyone who's ever spun up an ec2 and forgotten about it i mean dude it's orders of magnitude um <laughs> yeah like i've done that <laughs> um no to be honest i haven't seen this is this is what I really struggle with when people ask me about the cloud. Everyone asks me what what is the price? What is the what is it going to be? I can't really tell you, but I know it's going to be a ton less cost than your your probably I existing infrastructure or the way you architect it currently. No, the cost all depends on the amount of time or something. Yeah. So if you have a job that needs a CPU 100% 24/7 that's at that point I know more the right stuff. In our case, where we, so when the movies are flowing, we can content from like do something. That's perhaps something that happens, let's say, when you really receive a, a lot of content 10 times a day. I don't want to maintain an EC2 for 10 times a day. That's yeah. the main reason to move from an EC2. We had an EC2 before, to move from an EC2 to an function. Yeah, the, the costs are pretty low. You've got to try it out. In fact, if you manage to make an expensive Lambda function, you got to share the code with me. It'd be, it'd be interesting how you did it. <laughs> um, any more questions? Oh, sorry. Share the transition. Well, I, I, I sort of hinted about this earlier. You kind of need to architect. I think this phrase, born in the cloud, you have to architect for, for the Lambda function to begin with. There's, there's no real migration path, in my opinion. Unless everything's maybe broken up into JavaScript functions already, which is probably unlikely in your, in your app. So yeah, I wouldn't say there's a, is that, was it, was it, did I answer your question, kind of? Yeah, you need to, you need to re-architect, sorry. Yep. Accession handling is, uh, it works, it's just like JavaScript, I guess. You can, uh, I'm not a huge error person, but uh, the way that I usually write them is, because uh, we're using promises, what's a promise reject? And then, and then um, it, it depends actually if you're doing like, if you have like a, your Lambda attached to a HTTP event, you have to worry about your HTTP responses. But uh, normally you just do a callback and with your error, and then your lambda function just ends. Boom. So, yep, it's pretty simple. I like it. I'm excited about it. Why do you phone only JavaScript? What, what's wrong with it? Why, why should we not use the other languages? That are because they're not as. I. Let me know. Let me know. No. For Christ's sake. Who invented this UI? Some idiot. Um, uh, I think JavaScript, I have the feeling that it's way more native and better supported than the other languages. I just have that feeling. 
It's probably it's not it's not based on anything, and it makes it easier to deal with JSON. It makes it easier to deal with uh, the the DynamoDB. I mean, I has anyone used DynamoDB d uh, without using something like Doc Client? Because that's insane. Because it's it's horrible to use without uh, the uh, the AWS Doc Client abstraction. In my opinion, you have to worry about types all the time. Which is boring. Okay. Um, any other questions? So, oh yeah. Okay. Uh, so, how easy is it to set up your Lambda serverless functions on backends that are sort of like, you know, like a CDN would do it? Like, you, you put it closer to your users for different users. Oh, well, you. It's pretty straightforward to attach to HTTP event. You get an endpoint, then you put that behind cl CloudFront. I've done that pretty much with all my demos, yeah. Because the CloudFront gives you the SSL uh, with your domain, sorry. It gives you, you, it gives you a domain. And then, uh, obviously, you set up your CloudFront um, uh, not to cache on the, the post and the, uh, the other, to whitelist the headers, right? For so the you're, you're putting CloudFront in front of Lambda? Yep. Uh, but what about? Running, because like, what about Lambda on different? Server, so, in some, some data center, so can you run it for Singapore user in Singapore? Can you run it for a US user in the US? Well, you could do, I guess. Uh, there is Cloud Front and Edge, but okay. Yeah, yes? There's something called Lambda and Edge. But it's very limited. I, I think it's not worth um, getting too excited about. Yeah, don't, don't, don't get excited about it. There, there is new technology called uh, Lambda Edge, which is in beta or something like this. And that is a, a game changer when it actually works. Because the idea is that every CloudFront pop around the world, there's a ton of them, every, you know, there's a, there's a zillions. The idea is that you can run your Lambda function on that pop, never mind a region, on the frickin' pop. So now your user experience for your, for your users, potentially all around the world, is like 20 millisecond round times on, on something actually happening. That is phenomenal, in my opinion. Usually, the user experience for something happening, API or something, is like 200 milliseconds. I mean, with that, that's a big. Yeah, it won't. Lambda Edge right now is for just like rewriting headers and things like that, kind of boring stuff. But maybe it will get more amazing or something like this. I think uh, like Fastly is doing something like this. I heard. I was watching some YouTube video. So I think the future is, um, yeah, JavaScript running on, on the edge, JavaScript running on the browser, JavaScript everywhere. Isn't it exciting? <laughs> it's kind of scary, actually. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, good work, Sebastian, with that JavaScript thing. It was a good bet. <laughs> OK, that's enough. Thanks, guys, for coming once again. Um, the videos are going to be online. Oh, uh, geez, I must not forget this. If anyone wants to talk about something somewhat interesting, ideally for me, uh, something that you've just learned from work, that, that you know, something practical that's you know, not 